Sing for joy in the Lord. O you righteous ones, praise is becoming to the upright. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Amen. And we are going to light our fourth candle today. We already have lit for us the first three, which are prophecy, the Bethlehem, the angel's candle, and now we, or today is the angel's candle, Uh, last week's was the shepherd's candle. We light the angel candle, the fourth candle of Advent, um, and it announces that the babe of Bethlehem, whose birth the angels announced on Christmas Eve, will come again with all his angels to take us home and establish his everlasting kingdom. Our confession of sin, let's join together. Heavenly Father, we come before you to seek your mercy and grace. We have sinned against you and against ourselves with our wrong attitudes of selfishness and pride. We have not followed completely what you have told us in your word and have at times even rebelled against your ways. We are sorry. We seek your forgiveness and cleansing through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom all praise and glory will be given in his name. Amen. The Declaration of Grace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us. The promise of Scripture is that whoever confesses his sins to the Lord will receive forgiveness through the faithfulness and righteousness of Christ. God grant that this may be the experience of us all. On the other hand, I declare to the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence, God has not forgiven their sins and will assuredly visit their iniquities upon them. If they do not turn from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Christ before the day of grace ends. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more and violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. 
and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Our psalm is from Psalm 89, verses 1 through 5. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, Steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Selah. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. And our epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 and through 27. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to the throne of his father David. Will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Heavenly Father, your word is truth. And we pray that as we hear your word proclaimed today, that that truth would sink into us and that we would be affected by it, not only today in this service, but in the week week in our lives to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The uh, Latin liturgical name for this Sunday in the lectionary is, I'm not going to say the Latin, but translated, it's rain or drop down Sunday. Drop down Sunday. I I, kind of like the sound of that. And as you just heard, um, the idea that Jesus is dropping down to, to earth as God's gift to us through this vessel, Mary, um, just kind of a a nice ring to it, especially we'll get to some Greek down here in the text that'll make that drop down or fall down idea come alive a little bit more. Um, It begins here, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God to from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth. In this sixth month, as Luke was just speaking before, is regarding Elizabeth's pregnancy. So Elizabeth is six months pregnant, and now God is coming to Mary to tell her that she is going to be pregnant. Uh, This angel Gabriel not Michael. Those are the two main named archangels in the Bible. There's another one that sometimes people try to put in there. We don't we don't know. There's a lot of extra biblical stuff. And, but Michael and, and Gabriel. And Gabriel is um, 
charged with messaging. When you see his name, it's usually the angel that is bringing a message. And when you see Michael, it's usually the warrior angel, the one that's fighting a battle or leading an army. And, and so here we have a message coming from the messenger angel, uh, Gabriel. Verse 27, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So we have this um, virgin, young woman, unmarried. This isn't the technical term in Greek for virgin, but if you're talking about a young, unmarried Jewish maiden of Jewish culture back then, that would have very much been implied, uh, as we also see later in the text. She's betrothed to David, to, to somebody from the house of the line of David, though, this Joseph person. And, and this would have been big news, Any, anybody in that lineage from David, because David was not only the biggest, most mighty and awesome king in the Old Testament, but arguably one of the greatest kingdoms in the entire world in the history of the world would have been King David's kingdom. There's, um, you know, the historians argue there might be a, a couple in China and, and um, one other biblical one, but it, basically David is, is up there in a top five list for sure in the history of the entire world as far as his kingdom's reign. And, and here you have Joseph, uh, you know, years and years later, generations later, and, and he is of that lineage in that line, as well as the idea of all the Old Testament prophecies that said someone would come out of the line of David in order to save the world. Hmm. Old Testament Israel looked forward to this king to come and save them from their sins, the world, from sin, from death, and from the devil. So this is this is exciting news that this angel is, is just even coming to talk to Joseph, who is of this line, or Mary and Joseph, who, who are of this line. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. How do you greet people? When, when you meet somebody, you say, Hello, or Hi, how you doing? Um, there's, there's all kinds of ways of greeting people. This translation here says greetings. There are other translations that say hail. This is where the Catholic Church gets the hail Mary full of grace. This is the verse. The word isn't hail. The word isn't greetings. I wonder sometimes why the translators don't just, when it's quite literal, just give it to us. But it, it was in form of a greeting, so they use the word greetings. But the word is charis, which means grace. It is the word for grace. So it would be likened if me, instead of coming to you and, and saying hello, I came to you and said grace. And in this culture and in this time, that word grace would have been very well understood, not as like a common name like we see it today, but as the idea that there is a free gift being given. And I don't know about you, but the idea of an angel out of heaven appearing to me, and the first words out of their mouth is grace, it just seems like a warm fuzzy. It seems... God wants to give you something that you don't deserve. Let that sink in. God wants to give you something that you don't deserve. Grace. Um, a little bit of a, a thought about the translation of the word hail from some other translations. The word hail has, if you look at its etymology, it has a little piece of submission to it. So when you say hail to someone, then you are submitting to them in a form of a way. And, and in no way was the angel coming to Mary and submitting to her. He, he was saying grace to you. So just, just a thought, okay? Just, just, just throwing that out there. This, this is a, a greeting of grace. And then, boy, we're, not gonna, we're, we're gonna work through this one verse pretty slowly. So the first word, greetings, and then, O oh, favored one. Who wants to guess at what the root of the word, O oh, favored one, is? Grace. Grace to you, you who are graced. God's gifts to you, you who are the receiver of God's gifts. The Lord is with you. Kind of a 
A lot being said just in that one word. The Lord is with you. And if we understand that this is not hail, Mary, it's, it's not this idea of I'm submitting to you, but it is grace to you and you are graced, we get this understanding that Mary is the one, however you picture Mary, I picture her as a pious young Jewish girl and um, somewhat fearful of her own sin and the punishment that that might be. And God is coming to her and saying, grace to you, you will be graced. And as a sinner waiting piously for a Messiah, grace is being poured out on you, Mary. At this very moment, the Lord your God is blessing you, Mary, beyond your wildest imagination. Just all this flavor can be added in in there. Of course, we're going to stick with the actual text. Grace, O graced one, the Lord is with you. In verse 29, as typically happens when angels speak to people throughout all of the Bible, but she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be, um, especially knowing what's coming up. Um, How many of you have had the thought how come I don't see miracles today? And wouldn't it be nice to see to have lived in like the times when miracles were all the, all over the place? Wouldn't that have been cool? I I, I think it would have been cool to see as many miracles. Um, a couple of the commentaries I was reading though kind of spoke against that. They said, guess what? In the Old Testament times, miracles were just as rare as they are today. It was a very rare thing to see God do something amazing that couldn't be explained. And um, although we have the compilation of them throughout the Old Testament, and then especially in the New Testament with Jesus, it seemed like for Jesus' three years, everywhere he went, there was a miracle here, a miracle there, a miracle here. But they were still just as rare, and that was a lot to do with why, when they happened, the flocks and droves of people came to Jesus. It just... Um, if you knew something was happening, you would want to go. If it wasn't rare, nobody would have showed up. Verse 30, And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do not be afraid. Fear not. For you have found favor. You have been graced with God. Grace, undeserved mercy, filled Undeserved, mercy-filled charity from God. Mary didn't do something in order to earn this position that she was in. God came to her and gave her grace, a blessing. Uh, One of the literal translations of grace, I love it. We're talking about grace a lot today. It's Christmas time, right? If, If you look back at some of the oldest etymology translations for for what the word grace means it is to make one glad by a free gift and we talk about christmas and we put the gifts under the tree and and we see you know when especially children when they rip into those presents and they get the present out and the big smile comes across their face this is that emotion that made glad by a free gift And this isn't some toy or an Xbox or a computer. This, this, you're being made glad by the gift which would save the world from its sin. Verse 31, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And what did I say this Sunday was called? This Sunday is Drop Down Sunday. Literal translation for Greek for the word conceive is caught in the belly. Mary caught in the belly the seed that would later you know, impregnate her and turn into Jesus Christ. Caught in the belly, the son of the line of David, and name him Jesus. So not only are you going to conceive miraculously without having been with Joseph, but... Also, 
it's going to be a boy. Um, it's going to be a son from the line of David. Let me just add that in case you haven't picked up on the fact that your betrothed is from the line of David. But we're also going to name him Jesus. And the Hebrew translation for Jesus is Joshua. And the literal meaning for the word Joshua is the Lord saves. So Mary would have had to have slept through all of her church Sunday school classes, whether they Saturday school classes maybe at that time, but she would have had to sleep through everything and really just not pay attention to anything to not get the fact that this angel is telling her that she was going to bear the Messiah. Verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob in his kingdom. There will be no end. This reign, this rule or kingdom, it will last into all eternity. That's the idea of there not being an end to the kingdom. Um, the Messiah is coming. Is, is If away, in so many words, let's shorten this down. The angel comes to Mary and says, welcome to Christianity for the first time, right? First person ever to get to receive that news. It's, it's Mary. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? And, you know, it's a miracle. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. It is by God's grace. It is a gift. It is a miracle that this is able to happen. And, and, and the grace to Mary, the, the true gift to Mary, we talk about Christianity is based in faith, right? It, it is our ability to put faith in God, which allows us to be able to receive this gift that he gives us. Mary... Having faith in God, God comes to her and, and makes her the, the mother of the Savior of the world and says, you get to believe this. How, how hard is it going to be to believe when her belly starts to grow? You know, how, how hard is it going to be for her to believe that she saw an angel that told her that she was going to bear a son when she hasn't done anything that would cause that? Her gift of faith was, was from that point on. Verse 36, And behold, your relative Israel, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Now, Elizabeth, just to briefly recap, you know, she was way beyond childbearing years, and God blesses her with a child through this miraculous God's gift of grace to her and their relatives. So Mary hearing her miracle is tied to Elizabeth's miracle. Great excitement. And later on when they meet, right, the, the babies jump in the womb. Remember that? I just love that imagery. Um, Barren, the idea of being barren was a curse back then. It, it was something that people were mocked for, so it wouldn't have been anything exciting to have happen to you. And here in, in Elizabeth's old age, she conceives and, and miraculously conceives um, because of her old age. So there's, there's, there's a wonderful blessing in the midst of that. It's almost as if you have been mocked and teased about something your whole life and then vindicated by it, the, the Lord's the Lord came back to her and gave her that blessing in that way. Um, in verse 37 and 38, I'm going to read them together. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it, to be me, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. For nothing will be impossible with God. A literal translation from the Greek. It's a little bit more wooden, but, but listen to it here. Because not, it will be impossible concerning God all that which has been spoken. That's a lot more words than for nothing will be impossible with God. And, and um, the part that I like to focus on is the part that says all that which has been spoken. And it makes this verse open up to being about so much more than what we are talking about right here. 
because not, it will be impossible. It will not be impossible concerning God, everything that God has spoken. And you could put that down into a little tiny narrow field and say everything that has been spoken to Mary about uh, Jesus being conceived and born and Elizabeth bearing a child, all of that is going to, it would be impossible for it to not happen right now. But because these words are, at, are in the Greek, all that which has been spoken, it includes and encompasses the words that God has given to us, right? And it's easy for me to tell you to apply this verse to you and your lives so that when you are reading the Bible and you see the Bible speaking to you, you need to understand that the blessings and the grace that are contained in the Bible, God will not allow them to not come true. It will not be allowed to, be, to happen. These blessings are for you. Jesus died for your sins. God's promise to you. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Put your hope, your trust, and faith in him, and you will be saved. Nothing is more powerful than God's word, which makes this promise to you. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. When you receive God's promise, when you understand that his grace is for you, let your response be the same as Mary's. Receive it as a servant of the Lord and let it be according to God's word, the same word that contains the promise of grace for you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the grace which you rained down or dropped down on Mary. And by dropping it down on Mary, you dropped it down on the entire earth that we could all be able to receive by faith your grace. And we thank you for that gift in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our congregation to you, um, our, the world around us in the midst of this COVID-19 epidemic, as we hear um, numbers are on the rise in all sorts of countries around the world, um, is bad news, but we also hear um, news of vaccines being given even in our home state and um, Lord, we pray that these things would balance out. Um, we pray for a return to some kind of normal of what we used to have. Um, we also pray that we would each as individuals be taking good care of ourselves and making sure to um, sanitize and do the things that we can in order to um, prevent the spread of this virus. Um, we especially pray for the um, first frontline workers that are... Um, trying to help people in the midst of this, and, and we pray for protection and safety for all of them. We also lift up before you, Lord, all of those who, I think of today, just the people with small colds and, and minor sicknesses, but the fear that goes along with it in this world of this could be something a lot worse, and so we pray uh, for them as well. We lift up all these concerns to you in Jesus' holy and precious name, and we continue as he taught us. Let us rise and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Christmas Eve service is at 7 p.m. Uh, bring a flashlight.